Hi, I'm Lori. Welcome to Simply Country Cooking. Um, I'm going to show you some things that I do in my kitchen. I, uh, a little bit about myself. My name's Lori. I'm uh, 56 years old. I have three adult children. I have three grandchildren. And I live in the country on an acreage just outside of Omaha. Um, some of my hobbies would include painting, uh, photography. I like to spend time with my grandchildren. My son races sprint cars, so I enjoy going to the races, vacation, and of course, cooking, and baking also. And so I thought I would just tell you about where my love for cooking and baking, I feel like it comes from, is my mom was a real good cook and baker. And growing up, I can remember my mom was always in the kitchen and seemed like she was always making bread. My mom loved to make bread. I used to sit on the counter and used to help her knead the dough and roll the dough out, and she was quite a cook. The one thing she'd make that I really enjoyed was she made a sweet dough, and she would split it into two halves. She would do one half, she would make runzas, and the other half she'd make pecan rolls, which 45 years ago, nobody heard of runza. Runza wasn't around back then, so it was really good food. And both my grandmothers were good cooks. Um, my grandma on my mom's side made a cream pie that was out of this world. And my other grandma, she was, she could cook anything too. My mother-in-law was a good cook. She's not with us no more, bless her heart, but uh, she taught me how, she helped me master the art of making a good gravy. So I was very fortunate to have women like that in my life that taught me how to cook, the fundamentals. And I took that and I just kind of went into my kitchen and with trial and error, I've just gotten where I am today. I'm not a gourmet cook. I'm not a chef. I've never been a chef in a restaurant. I've never done any type of culinary school. So it's just pretty much what's happened in my kitchen. We um, have a lot of drop-ins at our place, and so I find myself cooking for large crowds on a pretty regular occasion. If you're at my house and I'm cooking, sit at my table and have something to eat. So um, I get asked quite often who are some of the new food stars that are out there now, like on the Food Network and that. And I tend to, I really still like Julia Childs, the French chef, which really kind of dates me, but that's all right. Julia was, uh, she, there's nobody like her, still nobody like her. She had something about her, her voice and just her mannerisms. She was fun to watch. And nowadays I like um, the pioneer woman, Ree Drummond. She's one of my favorites. She cooks a lot like I do, very simple, basic type food. I also like, uh, Trisha Yearwood's another one I like, the Barefoot Contessa. So I have a lot in common with, like I said, Reed Drummond's probably the closest. There's a gal um, up in North Dakota that does a cooking show. I can't think of the name of her cooking show, but she, I like the way she cooks too. And in this day and age, with the cooking channel, the food network out there, it really makes it to where people can cook and learn the basics of cooking a lot easier than before. But I guess it's kind of a trade-off, the Food Network versus Home Ec. When I was in school, there was still Home Ec, not Home Ec anymore. So the Food Network is a, is a, a great tool, and um, hopefully this cooking show will help you, those of you out there that feel like you can't do it, that you actually can do it. I'm going to try to focus on doing very simple, basic things that anybody can do. I don't do any type of gourmet cooking. We use a lot of store-bought goods to prepare our things. And I think you'll find that whatever I cook, you'll be able to cook. You should have no problem at all cooking. For our first segment, since we're gonna air right before Thanksgiving, I thought it would be fun to do a pumpkin pie. Um, we're gonna be using a lot of store-bought and things that anybody can go to the store and purchase and to make a pumpkin pie, believe it or not, you don't need a lot of fancy stuff. You know, a pie plate is really about all you need. And you can even go into the store, into the frozen section, and you can buy a frozen pie crust in a, in a uh, silver foil tin pan ready to go. So you don't even have to have a pie plate, but you know, you can get a pie plate anywhere. So we'll be making uh, pumpkin pie. I'm gonna show you how to do the, the crust, the filling, from beginning to end.
KPAO Community Television, handmade in Omaha since 2013. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Hoig. Hi, I'm Paul Madsen. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Saúl López. KPAO Community Television, where Omaha talks. Hi, welcome back to Simply Country Cooking. Uh, we're going to get started on making this pumpkin pie. So the first thing I like to do when I'm making a pumpkin pie is I use store-bought and crust. I do not make my own crust. Tried that. I wasn't real good at it. But if you want to make your own crust, go for it. A lot of people do. Like I said, you can go to the freezer section and you can buy a pie crust already done in a pan ready to go. I prefer to use Pillsbury pie crust. And normally when I'm making a pie, I like to take it out and just set it on the counter. And I like to let it not necessarily come to room temperature, but at least get the chill off because it makes it just a little bit easier to handle. Um, so we'll just leave that set there. I might go ahead and at least get it open here. And now, <clears throat> the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna turn your oven on. You're gonna wanna turn your oven on to 425 degrees. With a pumpkin pie, you'll bake it real hot for a few minutes and then you'll reduce your heat and cook it longer at a lower heat. Make sure you check your oven before you turn it on. Make sure there's nothing in it. That's one thing we learned in home ec. So, we got our oven going, so now we're going to assemble the pie filling. So, I'm going to be using Libby's Pure Pumpkin. And you can buy Pure Pumpkin, Libby's Pure Pumpkin anywhere. You don't necessarily have to buy Libby's. I'm sure different stores make different browns, but Libby's has been around a long time. And the recipe for this pumpkin pie is on the back of this can. And believe it or not, this recipe has been on the back of this can for 70 years. So it's been tried and tested and must be pretty good. And they've actually changed it up a little bit. They actually have two recipes on the back of the can now. And they have what they call the new fashion pumpkin pie. And it's just a little different in that you don't use sugar in that. You use a sweetened condensed milk. So I haven't done, have not made that pie yet, but I'm guessing it would have more of a custard consistency. But Today we're going to do the famous pumpkin pie, just the original pumpkin pie. So, and I do things differently. If you want to do it like me, fine. If you want to do it a different way, but I just basically take all the ingredients as they come on the recipe and put them in my pan. I don't put the powders and the, the flour or the sugar and that kind of stuff, the dry ingredients, I don't put them together or the eggs together. I just as it goes down the, the recipe, I put it in my pan. So the first thing we're gonna put in is our pumpkin. So we'll go ahead and put the pumpkin. And what I find amazing about this pumpkin, and I, I didn't realize it until I actually Googled it, is when it says it's pure pumpkin, it is pure pumpkin. There, when you look at the ingredients on the side of this can, there's nothing in here but pumpkin. So it's pretty amazing to me. So let me grab a spatula. Alright, so we got our pumpkin out. And the next thing we gotta add, I believe, is the milk. And I'm blind, so I gotta put my glasses on, but just to confirm. So we're gonna put in, it calls for evaporated milk. Now it calls for a cup and a half of evaporated milk. This can is a cup and a half, it's 12 ounces. If you don't have evaporated milk, that's not the end of the world. My mother-in-law made pumpkin pie and used regular milk all the time. So if you get ready to make a pie and you're like, oh, I've got the pumpkin, but I don't have the evaporated milk, no biggie. Use regular milk. It'll be fine. But we're going to use this can of evaporated milk. It says you're supposed to shake it, so we're going to shake it well. We'll dump that in there like that. 
And then I believe our next ingredients would be three fourths cup granulated sugar. Grab my sugar real quick. Now, in my kitchen, if my, if my measuring cup's not quite level, especially when it's sugar, I don't care, because I figure that little bit of extra sugar is going to make my pie taste really good. So, but if you want to level it off, take your knife and level it off. It's, it don't really matter. So, Now, our next ingredient will be salt. It calls for a half a teaspoon of salt. I thought I had everything ready to go, but evidently I didn't. <laughs> All right, we've got salt right here. We need a half a teaspoon of salt. Now on the salt, I would probably recommend that you do measure that out, because it would not be good if you put in too much salt, unlike the sugar. Now, <clears throat> on the spices, this is where it gets kind of tricky. This recipe calls for a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a half teaspoon of ground ginger, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. I'm not a big fan of cloves or ginger. I like cinnamon, but I don't like the others. And usually when I make my pie, I typically only put in cinnamon, but I actually have some pumpkin pie spice, and that has, that's a mixture of your cloves, your ginger, all those things. And I'm going to use a very small amount. I'm going to put in an eighth of a teaspoon of this seasoning. Just enough to where you'll, you'll barely taste it. Now, that's what I prefer. If you prefer to go with using all those other ingredients, that's fine too. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of the cinnamon. And then our last ingredient will be two eggs. Now, we all know that you never break your eggs directly into whatever you're making. You always want to put your eggs into a different bowl so that if you have a bad egg or you get a shell in there, you don't ruin your whole recipe. So there I have my two eggs. Drop them in. And now we're ready to whisk this all together. It, it comes together pretty quickly. You don't have to use a blender or mixer or anything of that sort. I know some people say they like to use an immersion blender, and if you wanted to use an immersion blender, you probably could. But it really does come together really quickly. I mean, it just once you break the eggs and, and blend it all together, it's, uh, it's done. There we have it. So now we'll go back to our pie crust. So we got our pie plate. And I managed to splash pumpkin mix all over everything. So now we will take this, pumpkin, uh, this pie crust, and it actually, since we've let it come to room temperature, it rolls out very nice. You want to just take that, lay that over that. This is a 9-inch pie plate, by the way. I forgot to tell you that. So you, after you've got this all pressed down, now our next thing is going to be we're going to trim the edges. And what I would like to tell you is if you could go about a quarter of the inch out from the edge of the pie plate, use a paring knife, and you just trim that excess crust off. And you'll see here in a minute why I tell you to go about a quarter of an inch out. Um, these Pillsbury crusts are, are made to accommodate about any size pie plate. So if you have a bigger pie plate, It'll work for that, you just would have to maybe stretch it a little bit more. So this is really the only part of the crust I have left over. So I really don't have enough there to do much with. If there was more crust left over, I could roll this out and use um, some leaf-shaped cookie cutters, make some real pretty designs for the top of the pie. Or what my mom used to do when we were kids is she would roll out the leftover pie crust, put it on a cookie sheet, 
sprinkle it with sugar and cinnamon and bake it, and it was, we loved it. It was a real treat. So, so now we're going to do what's called a fluted edge, and it's very simple. Anybody can do this. But what you want to do first is you want to kind of take this, this leftover crust that you have and just kind of fold it under. Just fold it under on the top of the rim of that pie plate. So you can see how I'm just folding that over like that. You want to do that around the whole pie. And then we're almost to the, what I call the fun part. So we got, got it all folded under. Now we're going to take, we're going to use, I like to use my thumb. You can use any finger you want. You can use your index finger. You can use anything. I like to use my thumb. We're going to take our thumb and we're going to push out and we're going to take our index finger and thumb on the other hand and we're going to just squeeze. And we're going to go around the whole edge doing that. And that's what creates that decorative crust. There's other ways you can do your, your uh, crust. You can just use a fork. I've seen a lot of people just press it down with a fork. I've seen people get extra pie crust and cut out lots of leaves and put leaves around the whole outside edge, which is very pretty. Takes a little bit more time, but can be done. And there you have it. There's our pie crust. So now we are ready to pour our filling in. Now, when you put your filling in, you want to be careful that you don't get crust on the outside edge. You try to pour directly into the middle, and you want to come right up to about the top. There we go. All right, there you have it. So we are going to pop this into the oven for 15 minutes at 425. So your oven should be preheated to 425. Okay, so now we've got the pie ready to go, but I wanna show you what are called crust covers. And what this does is this prevents your crust from getting too brown. We have this style, which should just set on here well, it don't want to sit on there. So this pie plate must be a little bit bigger than what I normally use, which is good. Now we can use these silicone ones. Silicone ones are a little bit more user friendly as they will adapt to any size pie you have. And they just simply, they sit on, on top of each other. And just like that. And that'll keep your crust from getting too dark. And what you'll want to do is when you've got about 15 minutes left, you'll want to reach in and, or, you know, pull the pie out or reach in, whichever you're more comfortable with, and just pull them off. That's why they have these little tabs on so that they, they pull out easily. So we're done. The pie is ready to go. We're going into a 425 degree oven for 15 minutes. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Hoig. Hi, I'm Paul Madsen. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Saúl López. KPAO Community Television, where Omaha talks. KPAO Community Television, handmade in Omaha since 2013.
Welcome back to Simply Country Cooking. Our pie has been in the oven now for, we've done 15 minutes at 425 and then we reduced the heat to 350 and we've done an additional 50 minutes. And normally the way you can test a pie is the same way you would test a brownie and you can take a toothpick and stick a toothpick in and if it comes out clean, it's done. But there's other ways too, if you don't wanna leave a hole in your pie, you can actually jiggle the pie and if it wiggles, that's fine, but if it creates waves, that tells you that the pie is not done. And on a pumpkin pie, the rule of thumb would be to let it bake a little bit longer than not long enough because nobody wants to eat a raw pumpkin pie. So it'll all depend on your oven, um, depend on the air. There's all kinds of things that can factor into that. But I would say after an hour and 10 minutes, you should have a pie that's ready to pull out of the oven. So we'll get this out. And these little silicone things we can pull off. And there you have it, pumpkin pie. So we are going to go ahead and get this ready to serve up here. Now, cutting a pie, I usually just half it, half it, quarter it, quarter it. I was at a cooking store the other day and I noticed they actually sell a thing you can set on your pie that'll bake it into eight even pieces, but I kind of think I can cut a pie. So here we go. We're going to cut this in. We're going to cut it in half. We're going to come over here and cut it in half again. And we're going to start doing our quarters. And there you have it. We got eight equal pieces. So, now this is the tricky part, making it come out without having it fall all apart. All right, there you have it. Now, in our house, well, first I'll show you how most people like to eat their pies. Of course, with whipped cream. So, most people eat their pie like that. In my house, we eat our pie like this. I hope you guys all have a really good Thanksgiving. I hope you get to spend it with those you love and be thankful for what you have and just have a great Thanksgiving and thanks for tuning in. I'll be back next time. We'll be cooking some stuff for Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs>